In this clip, I want to give you a very quick look at what studying in Anki looks like, uh, because I'm assuming now that you've downloaded and installed the Anki uh, desktop app, you've opened it up and probably the first thing you've seen is that you have this kind of item at the top of the screen that says default or something like that, and you don't know where to go. So the first thing that I'll get you to do is to import a deck of cards so you've got something to study. Now I've, I've downloaded uh, a set which I'm about to import um, and I'll, I'll include a link in the description to where you can download the particular deck I'm using uh, right now. But basically once you've downloaded it, you can import it. <coughs> uh, I've saved it to a location that I know on my uh, hard drive. You do the same. I'm selecting the demo deck, opening it and it'll go through a process and import the cards. So I've now got uh, in my list of decks, um, and just in terms of the terminology that Anki uses, a deck is a container for a set of flashcards. So decks and cards are the two key units that are employed in Anki. So this deck that I've just downloaded and imported contains a number of what we call subdecks, and we'll talk in a later clip about how you can create those. The deck that we've imported uh, will contain cards that really don't mean anything to most of the people who have downloaded them. I created them to show a number of my classmates how you can use Anki. So they contain cards with in-jokes and um, you know, things that will appeal to Australia, uh, Australians and New Zealanders, but otherwise they're just there to give you an idea of what can be included in cards and how you can go about study. So if we wanted to study the, for instance, histology and imaging cards that I've included in the demo deck, the way that I do that is I would go and identify the related subsection, I'd click on it and I'd be presented with a screen that says study now. You can see that I've got two cards that are new to me, I've never seen before that I'm going to be studying. So I'll click on study now. It presents me with a question which I need to answer. And now that when I answer this question, uh, I, in, my, in my head, I'm going to get a feeling when I click show answer as to whether or not I was correct with my answer. If I was correct and I know that I'm likely to be correct on that answer again, I know it very well, then I would then give Anki some feedback. I'd say that question was really easy. And you notice the 4D against that option. That means that it's going to be four days before Anki will show me that question again. If I clicked on good, then it's going to be 10 minutes before it shows me that question again. And if I click on again, it's going to be less than a minute before it shows me that question again. Now when you first are studying cards, you're going to see the cards in fairly quick succession. So Indeed, the first, the first set of cards that you study, uh, you will actually be forced to see them twice in a session. So I'd have to see this card twice before I could push it out for a day, uh, unless I, it was very easy for me and, and I could push it out to four days. The other thing to note is that as time goes on, let's say that I'd selected this card as easy, I would see it in four days, but then the options that were presented to me once I'd seen that card on that day would not be the same as they are now. Instead, what it might give me is the again, good and easy options. But if I click easy, instead of pushing it out four days, it's gonna push it out a week. And after a week, it might push it out a month and so on. So you can see that for cards that you're pretty good at, it's gonna push them out quite far into the future. So you won't see them very frequently. For the cards that you're not so good at, it's going to put them in more frequent rotation, which is exactly what you want for efficient study. It means that the things that you're having difficulty with are the things that you're going to be focusing your time on. So I could continue studying these cards if I give this an easy, for instance, it'll present me with the next card in this deck, and so on. So that's how study in Anki works, um, and we'll go through into some of the detail in the remaining clips about how you make cards, how you make decks, how you can organize your cards, and how you can go about making sure that you're maximizing the efficiency of your study with some of the features that Anki has. So I'll see you in the next clip.